Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and this is a special request RPG Maker MV tutorial for Crimson Night Fox. And he asked how to make a simple cutscene, and he would like some help with how to do that. So there's several ways to make a cutscene. I've got a little example here for you, and we're going to go over it really quickly and uh, just touch on a few ideas that you can use. So this is a scrolling text. It's just a short demonstration on a simple cutscene, how you can make a few... Uh, small events turn into a sequence of events. So we've got this, uh, I'm not controlling it, it's doing it all, all by itself. And uh, we've got some show animations, we've got some move events, we've got some weather effects, some show text, and uh, basically Crimson Night Fox is asking for help on how to make a cutscene, and so um, I'll show you how to do that really quickly. Let's look at uh, our events. So when you're making a cutscene, you want to make a controller event. So your controller event doesn't need any icon, and it's most often going to be an auto-run event. So how, this, uh, how these uh, events work is it reads the pages in order from highest number to lowest number. So this is your precedence number. It's going to check to see if it can run page 4, and if it meets all the conditions, it's going to run page 4 and ignore these other pages. So you need to set your conditions in order that they line up 1, 2, 3, 4, and we'll go into how that works right now. So on the first page, we have no conditions. On page four, we have a condition of self switch B turned on. Now self switch B for this event isn't on at the beginning, so it's not gonna run this page. At this point, it's gonna check page three. It's gonna say, okay, can we run this page? Our conditions are tutorial cutscene example, uh, switch turned on. Well, it's not on yet because all switches are turned off from the beginning. So it's going to go to page two. Okay, self switch A is on. Obviously, you know, same thing with self switch B. It's not on yet, so it's going to go to page one. Conditions, no conditions. Can we run this page? Yeah. So it's going to event uh, run this page if it's auto run. It's going to happen automatically. So at the beginning of this uh, event, it's going to run the contents from top to bottom, uh, obviously. And it's going to, the first thing I have here is change transparency on. And what this does is when you turn the transparency on, it makes the character invisible. So that's right here on tab two, character change transparency on. When you do that, the character's uh, icon will be invisible and you won't be able to see the player. You can also go into your system and start the game with the transparency on if you wanna do that. Um, back to the controller event. The next thing we have is a fade out screen. So your fade out screen is basically going to make the whole screen go black so you can do the show text or anything. You don't actually have to do that. And also if you decide to do a fade out screen, you want to remember to do the fade in screen at some point, otherwise the player is going to have a black screen for the rest of the game. So fade out screen, fade in screen, tab 2, right there it is under screen. So underneath that we have our show uh, scrolling text and that's basically going to just uh, do that intro little thing, uh, intro scrolling text at the beginning that you saw and it's showing you this is a short description, you put whatever you want right here. You control the speed, the higher the number, the faster it goes. If you check this box, you're going to allow the player to hold down the action button and speed up how fast it scrolls. Um, if, uh, if you have another plugin called Sound Cypher's uh, Speed plugin, um, actually I'll just show it to you super quickly, uh, right here battle speed up plugin this will also work uh, as a uh, speeding up event so i have this plugin because it speeds up things like that as well um, so after that we're controlling self switch a we're turning self switch a on because if we didn't if this is an auto run event and it still wouldn't have met the conditions to the next page it would keep running this and you'd be trolling your audience by scrolling this text over and over and over you don't want that so we turn on self switch a right here which activates the next page because remember it checks every uh, number from highest to lowest so now at the end of this event when self switch a is turned on it's going to read number two and it's going to ignore number one because it meets all of these conditions so after that happens it's going to go to page two fade in the screen turn the transparency off so now it's no longer black screen and you can see the character we're going to control the weather effect now this is a simple way to add a little bit of ambiance to the game to your cutscene and that's under tab 2 screen set weather effects so you can select your type of weather rain snow storm and possibly others in the future power will determine how much of a uh, magnitude it is 
and then duration will be how long it takes to, to reach that maximum uh, magnitude. If you set this to wait for completion, it's going to basically freeze the game for however long you have it wait and then build up the, that, the rain or snow until it gets to that point. So if you want it to be absolutely instant, you would go one frame and uncheck wait for completion. If you want it to be uh, gradually building up over a few seconds, you might go like 180 or 240 and not wait for completion. If you want to lock the player down for those three seconds, you would wait for completion. And that's it for tab two screen set weather effects. Underneath that, uh, movement routes are your friend and you can control any event on the map with your controller event, even though um, it's not, like you can move the player even though you're not doing anything with the player right here. So you can create a new movement route and we'll actually show you where that's at. That is gonna be on tab two, set movement route. And that's gonna let you select what you wanna move at the very top so you can see what's your target, we want to move the player, and then we select uh, the order of events we want this to happen. So we want to move up 14 tiles, because I've already counted them from here up to the middle tile here. We're going to move up 14 times, then we're going to turn left, which isn't going to make the character move, it's just going to make them face that direction. Then we're going to insert a weight, and the same thing works here, so 60 frames is going to be one second. So we're going to lock the player down, he's going to turn left and wait half a second, turn right, wait half a second. If you don't include these, these weights, he's going to go left, right, left, right, and he's going to go so fast you won't even notice that he turned at all. So you want to include weights when you want to add a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, the player's uh, suspecting something. So he's looking left and then he's waiting and looking right. And he's, so you can uh, really, uh, you want to use weights, basically what I'm getting to. A, a couple things to note about movement routes. If you tell the character to move into a wall and you don't have skip if cannot move on there, it will lock up the game right then and there and you can't do anything about it. So either carefully plan your move events or check skip if cannot move. You can do lots of different things with movement routes. You can control switches, you can lock the player down and make jump effects and all kinds of different stuff. Check it out and experiment with it, see what's, uh, what works best for you. So underneath that we have a show animation. So you can play sound effects or you can show animations. You can make your own animations. You can make your own sound effects too, but you can make your animations that play a series of sound effects. So. Basically, that's right here under character, tab two. You're gonna show animation. You're gonna select where you want that animation to go, and you're gonna select what animation you want to play. And you can select wait for completion or not. You can see a, a pattern here. Wait for completion is gonna basically make the game stop and finish its process of what it's doing, show the entire animation and all sound effects, and then move on to the next. Or if you have several things going on at the same time, you may not wanna wait for that animation. You may want it to go and show one explosion, then another explosion before the first one even finishes. So it's up to you and what you're doing. Underneath that, we're gonna control a global switch, not just a local, but this time we're gonna control a switch. So this is on tab one, control uh, switches and that's going to be right here under game progression. So it doesn't really matter what you call the switch at all. You can call it, you know, 111111 and it doesn't really change anything. So I call this one tutorial cutscene example switch. Uh, we're turning this one on and this is going to control a couple of things. It's going to one move us to the next page page, but it's also going to be at which point I want this event to show itself. So before I finish the entire controller event uh, I'm going to show you how to branch uh, your events from the controller event to other events. So at, cert at a certain point in the controller's sequence of events, you want stuff to happen outside of the controller. Like you want this uh, event to show itself. So this event has no contents and this is not an auto run event. This is just an action button because a general rule when you have a blank content, you don't want that auto run because it can lock up the game. So we have this as an action button which will do nothing when we actually run the event, but it will show the image when this switch is on. So if this switch is off, you may have noticed at the beginning, this event didn't show itself at the beginning. It waited until we looked left, we looked right, looked left, and then in a animation played and then it showed itself. So that's how we control when it happens. We make a condition saying that this global switch has to be on in order for this image to show itself. And we're doing that on page two at the bottom. So once this is done, we're controlling self, uh, we're controlling the global switch, 61 tutorial cutscene example, we're turning it on and it's gonna jump to the next page, but it will finish what's going on in uh, this page first. So it's gonna show the balloon uh, exclamation mark and then it's gonna make the player turn up
face the you know where uh, where the event showed itself and then it's going to jump to the next page and now since uh, we've had this conditions being met this page will run it's also an auto run our controller like I said most of the triggers are going to be auto run so at the top of this one I'm sure you've already seen this one show text Basically, if we're using Yanfly's message core, you can do forward slash n, and in brackets, you can type in whatever you want, and it'll show that as the name uh, on the show text. So you can align this to the middle, to the right. Just look at the help file. I'll put a link in the description below uh, to Yanfly's message core if you want to get that. You can do all kinds of different things, like show variables and all kinds of different stuff in the text. And that's basically it. Set your background, set your position, and that's it for show text. Like I said, I'm pretty sure you already know about show, show text. So underneath that, we're going to show a balloon icon, and then we get to uh, select where we want this first balloon icon to be, and we want it on Crimson Night Fox, uh, and then we're showing the sweat balloon. We're not checking wait for completion. Now, why am I doing that? But I am checking wait for completion on the next one that's uh, showing the light bulb on the player because I want them to both play at the same time, but I don't want it to just skip past it and not finish playing it before it does uh, the transfer event. So we wait on the second one. We can have like 10 different uh, show balloon icons going and it'll play them all uh, and it'll wait for them to finish if you make the last one wait for completion. So we're just gonna show both of these at very, very close to the same time, like boom, boom, and the next one is gonna play. After that, we're gonna control another self switch because we don't need to use a global switch. We're not turning on another show uh, picture or image for, our, for something else. So we're gonna use self switch when we can, global event, a global switch when we need to. And uh, so this is going to uh, go to the next page, which is our last pa page and a general rule when it's a blank content We don't want an auto run event That's going to be action button and our self switch B will be on but before it goes to the next page We want it to turn off the weather effect because we're going to transfer the player to the beginning of the game uh, After the opening cutscene, right? So we turn off turn off our weather and we're going to transfer the player so the same thing for show weather, you go to show weather and you click on none and you hit OK. And then transfer player is uh, tab two, transfer player at the top. You s click these three dots and you select where you want to move the player to, if, what, fa what direction you want them to face and what kind of fade out you want. Really, really simple. After that, it's going to go to our last page, which will do nothing and not lock up the game because it's not an auto run event. Let's take a look at this one more time. But that's basically gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any special requests, put them in the comments below. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already uh, to the channel. I really appreciate it if you do that. Um, if you want to be more involved and get, uh, like, maybe work with a group of people, uh, another uh, way you can go about that is joining the Indie Dev Game Group. There's a forum for where you can create your own groups and you can add your own um, uh your own posts and create your own forums and add your own profile and everything. All of that is at driftwoodgaming.com. You don't have to, but if you want to be more involved with indie game devs, uh, you can do that. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, you guys are awesome. We'll see you in the next video.